In the bottom right, we've got the Ukrainian Protoss player playing for TT Esports. He is playing in blue today. He is Whitra. And in the bottom left, we've got our red Zerg player, also from Ukraine, but not playing for TT Esports. He is currently a free agent. Not sure if he's actively looking for a new team, but I would imagine that he is, because uh, he's still playing StarCraft to uh, pretty much full time, as far as I know. He is Dimaga. Now, this map is a bit more of a longer macro map. It's got a lot of bases. It's a really long rush distance in all ways. They're really at the very far corners. And of course, that means that we should be seeing things go on to the later game. Um, one of the things that Waira really likes doing on this map is taking the third, to, but which is hidden by the rock tower and obviously the destructible rocks very early. He places his cannon in a way that he's able to start knocking away those destructible rocks, knocks down the rock tower to be safe from those speedlings, which is really the biggest vulnerability in his air harassment play. So I'm expecting we will see that come out from Wairar at the moment. Demarga though, he also has what I consider a very easy four base. He can take the base directly south of his natural, for his third. Meanwhile, knocking out the rocks and also the destructible rock tower to the base um, to the right of his main in order to take that very quickly. And both are fairly safe to take. And all he's really got to worry about is the dead space for the oracles to get in or potentially void rays as well. And other than that, obviously the watchtower placement is nice for all the attack paths. All in all, I, I like this map. <laughs> Conclusion and some predictions there out of medals uh, for the rest of the game while we see White Trout trying to micro his probe a little and he is doing a good job delaying the hatchery here uh, by Demago forces an extra overlord to be produced before the hatch goes down and that's uh, a very minor detail of course but it's going to be delaying the hatch a little bit delaying the entire build order out of Demaga ever so slightly so White Trout's probe uh, can go home uh, with his head held high. He could indeed, of course. The other thing we do have to consider is, will Demaga go for Mutalisks? That's something we haven't seen so far. Nope. Instead, he's been favoring the Roach Hydra composition because it does deal very well against the mass Void Rays we saw in game one. And as a result, that's a possibility, of course. We saw in Demaga's stream this afternoon, which we were both watching, that Vipers are quite likely. Demaga likes the Vipers. He's also been happy to use Infestors, even after they're quite considerable um, nerfs in Heart of the Swarm, of course. Their range has been increased, but it's now a projectile on fungal growth, which means that it's harder to hit. Infested Terrans no longer gain the upgrade advantage, so those are two quite substantial changes. And of course, fungal growth itself very recently changed to not do bonus damage to armor, which makes it a lot less effective against Etos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so many changes happening all across the board. We see Demaga taking his uh, third base in the same position that we saw Famut uh, take his uh, third base in the uh, Challenger series that we had before this one. Uh, we are going to have show match series like this one uh, every Thursday, I believe, and sometimes on Sundays, every now and then, we're going to be doing qualifying events as well. Don't uh, quote me on uh, on the exact details, but the uh, the show match series that we've been running so far every Thursday is a challenger match where two up and coming top masters, uh, UK players, duke it out in a best of five. And after that, we're going to be going into the main match. That's the one you're watching right now. Wide Drive versus Demaga. There are two big names for today, and they have not been disappointing so far. Um, I'm hoping to see a little bit more out of Wydra. He is known for his double Stargate play, and he's been doing that, but it hasn't been successful. Can he change his style up to something different, but also effective? Well, I'm hoping he can, to be honest. I mean, we've seen him try to go from ZT harassment, but there goes the Stargate. So, Wyra yet again, going to be trying to go for it. He's also got that Zealot already working down though that Rock Tower in order to get a safe third base. So, this is all the things piecing together, as I thought. It's aiming towards getting that even pre-seven minute third base very early. But Demaga has placed the Overlord there, ready to see it. Demaga isn't doing anything to punish it, though, yet. He does have its first two gas coming up now. Of course, this is probably the hardest map that you're going to get in order to punish this third base due to this collapsible rock tower as we see go down right now of course zerglings are going to struggle to punch through there with its 2000 health so of course that's something that demaga has to consider the mothership core is about to pop out so that came down at a very standard 40-ish supply for waiwa as he gets all the time the Stargate is chrono boosting that oracle out now and the drones just transferring down to the third base for demaga so lurlium this is all looking very wide run normal and very demaga <laughs> normal for the moment. 
Indeed, uh, White Rao uh, clinging on to his Stargate play. Let's see how effective it's going to be this time around. He's using a probe and a zealot to work away at the rocks uh, between his natural and his third base. Has taken out, uh, like you pointed out, those uh, that collection. If I can manage to uh, speak, can take out that rock tower that can collapse into those uh, destructible rocks that they are now. And they have three armor, so Zerglings are going to take a long time before they can uh, work their way into that certain position. We now see ten links on the way out of Demaga. Curious to see what he's going to use then, uh, them ten links for. Probably just for some map control and to deal with that single stalker that we uh, see out in the middle of the map. Indeed, he is just going to be trying to deal with this aggression. Of course, the Oracle there, the Stalker there, this third base trying to get denied. Um, with the Mothership Core as well, actually a good amount of damage being done on the Cancel Force. That is good news for Wyra, and it's the fourth base. I, I think I may have said third there, getting my numbers mixed up. But, of course, Damaga, that's kind of a little frustrating thing. If you're going to be taking that fourth base quickly to try and stay a base up, then you haven't committed to any aggression, and therefore you want to get that base and secure it, but these mm -hmm. oracles, the single stalker and the mothership core, are being thoroughly awkward for Demago at the moment. Yeah, what is Demago going to do right now? If Whitra decided to move into that third base, uh, he would actually be in some trouble. Right now he has 24 links on the way, that's going to make him really safe. Looks like the oracles want to chase down another drone here, so that's going to be another drone kill for Whitra, and the fourth base once again delayed. Demago delayed his lair significantly to be able to get that fourth base up so early, but now he's like, okay, well, can't get my fourth up, need to get a macro hatch, need to start my lair. So everything is going to be behind uh, for our uh, Ukrainian Zerg player. Actually, saying Ukrainian doesn't really mean anything when all the players in the match are Ukrainian. Does it? <laughs> now we see here, the Oracles and Mothership are going against Queens, and three Oracles will kill two Queens. Um, but as we see, the additional two Queens coming down actually mean that this is not going to work too well. Why are did lose an oracle there, which is not something he wanted to do. If he were to move into the main base, though, there is actually no queens there at the moment. The creep spread hasn't joined, so he could get a couple of kills. But look at this, an awful lot of speedlings coming straight towards the natural of Wyra. There is the few sentries there and the Zeta completing the wall off. So it's not going to go through. Luckily, Wyra did have that wall off complete because that could have been very bad news for him. Yeah, that's always uh, very detrimental to the uh, motivation and the moral of a Protoss player when you have a run by like that happen that you know you can so simply prevent by having a zealot on hold position and uh, maybe a sentry present. You're going to be able to thwart that so easy. The Zerg produced a lot of links he can't do anything with. And when you miss that force field or when the zealot's not there, you're going to be feeling really, really bad. And uh, I can speak out of own experience uh, because I'm not a professional player. I forget to, to put a zealot in there every now and then. Indeed. Now, what I'm seeing here from Waira, and I'm going to talk about his build first, is that the robotics base coming down. This is a good follow-up to the Oracle harassment that Waira has been playing with, where he actually gets a few Voidways out, as we're seeing, and goes into Colossi. So he gets Colossi and Voidway. Usually, he also chucks in a couple of Archons in there as well, so we'll wait to see if he does that later on. Of course, there's this fourth base, though, up with Demaga. He took the other expansion. The Oracles and Mothership Core are trying to go back in there and deal some damage, but with the Hydras and Queens, it's not going to be too successful. And Waira does actually have that Dark Shrine coming up now as well, so we should be seeing the Archons there, Lurlian. And altogether, with the three Evolution Chambers coming down, is that an indicator that he wants triple upgrades, or is it just getting triple upgrades while preparing for Vipers Consume? I think it is. Uh, I've been seeing him uh, use Viper Consume a lot on the Evolution Chambers uh, versus Terran, but I don't think it's it's as good to get Vipers versus Protoss, because what are they really going to prevent? I mean, Protoss players have a mobile army, relatively mobile. They can move out of those clouds really quickly. Oh, the Oracles out of Voidra out of position is going to lose one, two of his Oracles at the fourth base of Demaga. The Voidray stays alive, gets five kills, gets a good amount of drones dead, six workers killed by Whitera. But man, those two Oracles could have been uh, useful later on in the game to harass in, in the main base or harass in the natural because there's no spore crawlers present. It's uh, a bit sloppy there by the Grandpa Toss losing those two uh, Oracles there. Indeed it was. Now, I just a quick side note to the game. I see some people in the stream chat are asking, Heart, Heart of the Swarm beta keys, I heard. Yes, we will be giving some more out. Probably after this game, we'll give one out. So stick around, guys. But for the moment, we do, of course, have Waiwa. Trying to clean up some Zerglings with one brave Voidway. But the Hydras don't have speed. So luckily, the Voidway will get away for a second. I was like, oh my goodness, if speed finishes up, that would be so bad. But... First Colossus is out, the second just joining the main force as well. Mm -hmm. So, of course, this is a nice composition to deal with Hydra having Colossi there because it's just going to wreck it. 
Yeah. We have to keep in mind that the Hydras have way better upgrades. They're at 2-2, whereas White Rider is at 2-0 right now. He will be at 2-1 in a second, so not that big of a disadvantage in a few seconds. And those two Colossi are so powerful. The Hydras do not have speed yet. Speed is about to finish up in five in-game seconds. All the Queens are going to do go down without anything. They're just buying some time, transfusing each other. The Hydras are on the retreat. This is, this is a very, very scary attack for Demaga to be dealing with right now. He has nothing to do with the Colossus yet. The first few Corruptors have now just popped out Mantle. Seven Corruptors are out, but they're not yet in the fight. Indeed, they're not, and we've got the engagement coming down now. The Void Ray's cleaning out the Corruptors very quickly, of course, with their charge ability. They now have the Prismatic Alignment. They do bonus damage two armored so of course those corruptors die very quickly and why are able to start pushing forward he's got a supply lead more corruptors are now coming out one of those colossi is gonna fall the they've both now gone down actually so that is great news the void rays are slowly losing this fight they are cleaning out the corruptors but three are still remaining they're on pretty low health the spore pool are even getting a couple of shots off here more stalkers coming in and demaga looks to be in a little bit of a problematic position at the moment lurlian the prismatic alignment cooldown is about to finish up in five seconds. That's going to make those void rays so much more powerful. Is this one corruptor going to be able to kill any one or one of them? And yes, he kills one, but another colossus joins up. Wydra has such a such a huge lead on his opponent right now. Going to be killing off the fourth base. Yamaga desperately producing more Hydras. They do have the range upgrade. They do have the speed upgrade. But when fighting on Creep, that upgrade, that um, speed upgrade is going to do absolutely nothing for you. That speed upgrade is only useful when you're attacking off Creep with your Hydras. It doesn't do any anything for them when they're still back home on Creep. Whitra killing the fourth base, has his own fourth base up and running, and he's not going to commit into uh, towards the fourth base of Demaga. I believe I called the fourth base there for Demaga, but of course it was the fifth. Uh, base that he killed off there. Well, if you want to be pedantic, it was technically the fourth. It was taken fourth, and the one closer to his main ah. was, was fifth. But I'm, I'm just saving you there, to be honest. I don't think counting is that important at the moment. Of course, <laughs> the important thing... Who cares thing... about counting? They did that <laughs> in... Um... In, this in, isn't Sesame Street, Lurley, yeah. and we don't need to be counting right now. We need We're to be not worrying... We're <laughs> We need to be worrying about these Archons, these Zealots, these Stalkers, and the Void Rays getting ever so closer to the mm -hmm. fifth base of Demaga. So, of course, <laughs> Demaga, he's still sitting there with only a few Corruptors out. He's trying to get more, but only three on the field at the moment. Of course, those Void Rays will quickly wreck that. The Archons are in the composition as well. Demaga trying to go in from the side, but this is a great engagement for White Rar, in my opinion. He's got so much more stuff. He's cleaning things out very comfortably at the moment. The Corruptors are trying to come in and surround. That's good for Demaga at the moment. He is trying to pick off the Col Colossus and does manage to get it, but all of the ground army cleaned up, Lurlian. Mm -hmm. And even though Roaches are now in production, they can do well with the ground army that Protoss has. I mean, mainly Zealot Archon, but the Void Rays are still alive in the air. They're going to be chewing those Roaches and killing them so, so easily. The Archons are going to be tanking a lot of damage. 3-2 upgrades for White Ra versus only 2-1 on the Roaches. So two upgrades advantage for White Ra, and he is up by 60 supply right now, killing the fifth base of Demaga, or the fourth base, depending how you want to look at it. And that causes Demaga to throw the GG and White Ra to take the first game in the series and make the score 2-1.